Summer's heat can test even the most water smart trees, shrubs, and plants. But giving them more water isn't always the answer. Here are some tips to help you make the most of your drip irrigation system. Drip irrigation that applies water slowly and deeply over a longer period of time is perfect for plants. These deeper but less frequent waterings, typically measured in gallons per hour, help plants develop and maintain a healthy root system. Your irrigation clock should separate your drip stations from your sprinkler stations. This will allow you to set longer, less frequent drip run times that help plants thrive while you continue to cycle and soak any turf you have with your sprinklers. Plants do better on drip because drip irrigation delivers water to the landscape at the rate that the soil can absorb that water without runoff. Additionally, by irrigating only the root zone of the plants, it's more difficult for weeds to get a foothold and compete with that water. And remember, deeper watering means deeper roots. There's a greater amount of water reserve in the landscape for these roots, and it's a great benefit to your trees. Watering restrictions allow drip irrigation any day of the week. However, the number of days a week can't exceed what's allowed for sprinkler watering in any season. That's okay because an effective drip system won't need the extra days. In summer, the Water Authority recommends running drip three days a week. In spring and fall, aim for two days a week, while your winter drip needs should be met with just one watering day a week. Drip is versatile. You can vary emitter output for each plant, so you only need to program a single run duration for all plants. It's very common in our valley to find plants located within one drip zone that have different water requirements. This challenge can be overcome by adding emitters with different flow rates. For example, this golden barrel has a half gallon per hour emitter on it, while the lantana has a two gallon hour per emitter on it. Both have the same run time, but both receive different water amounts. Run times might vary from as little as 12 minutes for a very high flow emitter, up to about two hours for the lowest flow emitters. If you're not sure how many gallons per hour your emitters can water, here's a simple test to help you determine how long to run them. With your drip emitters running, take a tablespoon and measure how many seconds it takes the emitter to fill it. A one gallon per hour emitter will fill the tablespoon in 14 seconds. A two gallon per hour emitter will take seven seconds. A high flow emitter of 10 or more gallons per hour will fill the tablespoon in almost no time. Knowing this, you can adjust your run time to water effectively. If you think you're watering the right amount of time, but your plants are still stressed or failing to thrive, it's time to do some troubleshooting. If you have plants that are stressed, the first thing you need to do is check the soil. Not the day you water, but a day or two after you water. If the soil is dry, first check that all your emitters are working properly. If they are, you can either add more emitters to help deliver more water to the stressed plant, or increase the watering time. Extra emitters can be the better bet, because if you increase the watering time for the entire zone that's watered by drip, you may overwater healthy plants and create a whole new problem. If the soil around your plant is wet the day after you water, your plant's stress could actually be caused by overwatering. Water less often or for less time. Or remove one or more emitters from around the plant to reduce the amount of water it's getting. There are no real rules for what kind of emitters or how many emitters a typical shrub needs, but these tips can help. A new plant in a landscape may require only one emitter, but as this plant grows, so does its demand for water. An irrigation system should be designed so that one, it has the flexibility to change the amount of emitters, and two, it has the flexibility to change the location of these emitters in the landscape. Trees may need more drip irrigation adjustments as they mature. A young tree needs enough drip emitters to irrigate from the trunk out to the ends of the branches. A mature tree, the rule of thumb is that after the irrigation system shuts off, 50 to 75 percent of the canopy area should be wet. Remember, move your emitters out as your tree grows. Trees may need hundreds of gallons of water per week to remain healthy. Trees that are surrounded by or located near grass do get some extra water to their roots through the sprinkler water you apply to the grass. So plan carefully if you will be converting grass to water smart landscaping. Trees will need protection at their roots and additional drip irrigation 
in a wide canopy around the tree to avoid underwatering and stress. Drip maintenance is important. Walk your drip line, which should be buried to protect it from harsh sun. Check emitters often for clogs or heads that have broken off, causing emitters to shoot out water instead of drip it. If one emitter is releasing water too quickly or slowly, simply twisting it closed or opening it up more may not be the best route. A pressure compensating emitter could help. When using pressure compensating emitters, you will be assured that the first plant in your zone receives the same flow of water as the last plant on that zone. Don't mix and match parts. Try to same with the same manufacturer and try to select an emitter that will give you at least a 30 minute run time without runoff. About twice a year, find what's called the end cap on your drip line. It should be at the furthest point from your valve box. Then, open the cap and briefly run the system to flush out any debris that could be clogging your line. Let plants absorb the excess water and turn off the water before trying to recap your line. Be sure to visit SNWA.com for additional tips on making the most of your drip system. You can't be a front door gardener and expect your plants to thrive, but a little time spent outdoors taking care of your drip irrigation system will make sure that it takes care of your plants. Reporting for Waterways, I'm Christine Vaughn.